Have you ever wondered how your machine learning models work? I'm not talking about the model architecture or which features are most important in general. I mean how the model has made a specific prediction. To understand this, look no further than SHAP. It is a powerful Python package that will allow you to understand and debug your models. Hi, I'm Connor and welcome to ADO. Today, we're going to understand how to interpret SHAP values and explore the applications of SHAP. If you want more, make sure to wait till the end of the video, where I'll explain how you can get access to a Python SHAP course. Let's get started. So SHAP values are used to explain individual model predictions. They tell us how each feature has contributed to that prediction, specifically how the model feature has increased or decreased the prediction. To understand this, let's suppose HR has asked you to predict the annual bonus of all the employees in your company. You build a model using a data set of 1,000 employees. The data set has five features, including experience, which is the number of years of experience, and degree, which is a binary feature indicating if the employee has a degree or not. Now, HR may be curious about how this model works. They may even single out a specific employee and question how their predicted bonus was determined. You may be tempted to use a method like feature importance to answer some of those questions. And sure, this can tell us how important each feature is to the model prediction in general. But what about individual predictions? Feature importance also cannot tell us if features tend to increase or decrease the prediction. Or if we had a classification problem, it would not tell us how the features change the probability of a positive prediction. This is where SHAP comes in. Here, we have a SHAP waterfall plot for one of the employees. There's a lot of information here, so let's break it down. E of f of x is the average predicted bonus across all 1,000 employees in our data set. f of x is the predicted bonus for this specific employee. The SHAP values are all the values in between. They tell us how each feature has contributed to the prediction when compared to the average prediction. Lastly, the numbers on the y-axis are the feature values. 31 equals experience tells us that this employee has 31 years of work experience. We can see that the SHAP value for degree is $16.91. We say that because this employee has a degree, the predicted bonus is $16.91 higher than the average predicted bonus. Now, that's a bit of a mouthful. To simplify things, we can say that the feature has increased the prediction. Keep in mind, it is the feature's value in the context of the other feature values that has led to the SHAP value for that feature. The SHAP value for degree can change depending on which employee you're looking at. That is even if all the employees you look at have a degree. Hopefully this interpretation is clear when we have a continuous target variable. But what about classification problems? Let's look at another example. We build a model used to predict if a mushroom is poisonous or edible. Now, we can use SHAP to understand how each feature has changed the predicted probability that a mushroom is poisonous. More specifically, we interpret the SHAP values in terms of log odds. For example, this mushroom smell or odor has increased the predicted log odds by 0.89. In other words, its smell means it is more likely that we predict this mushroom to be poisonous. You see how SHAP values tell us which features are most important to an individual prediction. We can also combine or aggregate SHAP values from multiple predictions. This includes the force plot, mean SHAP plot, bee swarm plot, and dependence plots. These plots can tell us how the model works as a whole. At this point, you may be asking yourself, why even bother? Is it not enough that the model is making accurate predictions? Do we really need to understand how it is making those predictions? Well, SHAP has some key benefits. The first is debugging. SHAP allows you to take a closer look at incorrect predictions 
and understand which features have caused the error. We can also find cases where the model may perform well on a data set, but would perform poorly on new data in production. One example of this comes from a model used to power a mini automated car. The model was not working correctly, and we used SHAP to figure out why. It turned out the model was using background pixels and pixels of objects in the background to make predictions. So when we moved the car to a new location, the objects changed and the predictions became unreliable. If you want to read more about this application, then check out the article linked in the description. The second is that SHAP can provide the basis for human-friendly explanations. You may be cautious about the prediction that a mushroom is edible, and rightly so. That prediction can have serious consequences. SHAP can be used to provide an explanation and increase trust in the model's prediction. The last is data exploration. A data set will contain all sorts of hidden patterns. These include nonlinear relationships and interactions. Black box models are really good at finding these patterns. We can train a model on the data set and it will use these hidden relationships to make predictions. When we interpret the model, we learn what it is using to make those predictions. Sometimes we can learn something completely new. In this way, SHAP becomes a tool for data exploration. And the knowledge we gain can go beyond the model. For example, building better model features for simple models like linear regression. That's it. I hope you enjoyed this brief introduction to the SHAP package. If you want to learn more, then check out one of these videos. The first looks at the theory behind SHAP and the second looks at the Python SHAP package. You can also access my Python SHAP course for free by signing up to the newsletter in the description. This will equip you with the knowledge and skills needed to explain any machine learning model using SHAP.